Good afternoon, everyone. My name is um, Maximilian Teilenthal, and I'm founder of N26. N26 is a classical venture-funded fintech startup based in Berlin. Um, we founded the company in 2013 in Vienna, moved after a month to Berlin, and we launched the product to the public in January 2015. Today, N26 is the leading challenger bank in Europe. <clears throat> Today, I would like to talk about what we are doing at N26, why we are doing it, what's the N26 approach to banking, and then I would like to give you an outlook what's coming next on our journey. First of all, um, I would like to take a little bit to give you an overview where N26, where we are standing today. I would like to focus on three areas, one, location, two, growth, and three, fundraising. <clears throat> when we launched in the banking space, we realized that financial services um, is an extremely fragmented area. That means you had um, French banks for French customers, um, German banks for German customers, Italian banks for Italian customers, and so on. And we had from the beginning the vision to build a bank at European scale. So um, today, we're the only ones in Europe that based on one IT platform and one banking license onboard customers all over Europe. Um, we did this mainly for two reasons. One, because we wanted to provide a product that is as international as our customers. And two, we realized that banking, financial services in general, is an area of great economies of scale. And we realized the more customers we can onboard onto our platform, um, the cheaper we can actually provide services. And obviously, if you can produce you, you, if you can provide your services cheaper, you can generate cost advantages you can pass on to your customers. Today, we are in 24 markets in Europe. The last one we launched was the UK in the end of 2018. Let's talk about our team. We have about 800 employees today. They're coming from 50 uh, or from more than 50 different nationalities, and we're operating in three offices. One, our headquarters in Berlin. Two, we have a development hub here in Barcelona, trying to grow that to about 300 people. And three, we have a team working in our office in New York City. <clears throat> Talking about growth, we um, launched N26, we launched our product into beta in October 2014. We launched the product to the public in uh, January 2015. What you're seeing here is a progressive curve. We just surpassed uh, 2.5 million customers, um, and we are adding about 8 to 10,000 customers every day, which makes N26 the fastest growing bank in Europe. Talking about fundraising, um, I think the, the growth in our different markets and us being present in so many markets was basically providing the grounds for successfully raising six, uh, six funding rounds to date. Um, we could just announce raising or closing our Series D funding round, which was a 500 million, um, oh, which brought the total uh, equity raised by N26 to more than 500 million. <clears throat> and uh, we could actually see a, a evaluation of more, point, of more than 2.7 billion US dollars. Before I actually uh, talk about um, what we are doing at N26, and, wha um, and what's the N26 approach to banking, let's pause for a minute and ask ourselves the question, the question that made us start our journey at the beginning. Why start a bank? <clears throat> when, we when we entered this, the banking space a couple of years ago, I believed, and I still believe that this is true today, that financial services, um, is a market of tremendous opportunity. For me, financial services is the area most ready for disruption. One, um, we were looking at all the industries that have already, already been disrupted by modern technologies and by internet startups. It wasn't the big record labels um, that founded Spotify. It wasn't Blockbuster that founded Netflix. It wasn't the big transportation companies that founded Uber. 
um, it wasn't uh, the hotel chains, it wasn't the travel agencies that founded companies like Airbnb, and I very much believe it won't be the incumbent banks, it won't be the big existing banks that really change the way how millions of people are doing banking. Second, um, we were looking at the industry and there is a tremendous shift in user behavior. It's a shift you have already seen in all these industries, in many other industries as well. It's a shift from offline, people used to go to the bank branch, to online, people did banking on the browser, to mobile, people do banking on the smartphone. And then we looked at the, at the, at, at the products, at the digital products, at the mobile products traditional banks were offering, and we realized no one was actually providing a great, an intuitive, a good digital product. We were looking at the banks and realized retail banks are mainly standing out with three things. One, poor design. Two, all technology. Three, high costs. If you're looking at the banks, at the banks they have gotten really fat on our fees. Um, <clears throat> they're providing a minimum service at a maximum of hassle. It's no wonder that seven out of 10 millennials would rather go to the dentist than um, visiting a bank branch. So what's the N26 experience? What's the thing we wanted to change with N26? What's the user experience we wanted to provide to our millennial customers? Um, the product of N26 is a mobile-first bank account. It's a product for digital natives. It's the product that provides should provide a great user experience. It is entirely paperless. It is, we can say, I think, it's the first digital product that was made by digital people, for digital people, together with the community. Um, we want to help our customers to organize their finances. We want to give them back the control over their spendings. We want to help them to save. We want to help them to plan their financial life. The latest product we launched in that regard is N26 Spaces. Um, <clears throat> it follows a little bit um, the model of, of, of mental accounting. So we realized if you as a customer, um, if you have like 3,000 euros on the, uh, on the account, you don't think of that as one bucket with 3,000 euros, but you put aside a little bit of money for your next vacation, you put some money aside for your groceries, you put some money aside that you, are, uh, that you need to pay your rent. We used to have identity between customer, account, and card, and we are fully breaking that up. So today, we make it as easy as opening WhatsApp groups for our customers uh, to create sub-accounts. So um, this is also a starting point for further products. In the future, you will be able to share sub-accounts with your friends. We will be able to issue your cards for those sub-accounts. You will be able to hold such sub-accounts in different currency and so on. Um, finally, um, we want to offer financial products that make sense for our customers. We want to provide them in the moment the customer needs them. And we are fully open whether it's products we are building ourselves or whether it's products that we are uh, providing together with our partners through partnerships. <clears throat> I think mobile payment is another important topic for us, obviously offering Google Pay and Apple Pay in the markets where it exists. So why are we doing this? Why did we build N26 Spaces? Why do we try to build the best user experience? Um, why do we think these things are important? Why did we bring um, these cool cards to the market? We actually wanted to build a bank our customers like. We were thinking about what's the customer problem um, we want to solve. And actually thinking about that also made us create our new branding campaign, the 26 reasons why to become a customer of N26. You have might seen this campaign just when you walk out of this building and you go to the metro station, you will see that those stations are N26 branded. So what's the promise of N26? Why should customers choose banking with N26? Um, 
We wanted to build the first bank our customers love. I think it is a bold statement in an industry where no one is particularly excited about their banking partner. Um, we wanted to provide our services at, at the best possible cost. Obviously, we, we didn't want to have any hidden fees. And if you think about our business model, if you want to understand our business model, you have to think about our cost base first. One, we acquire customers at a small fraction of the price compared to any traditional banks. Why is it like this? Because most of our traffic, most of the users are coming to us through virality, because um, they have friends, they have been delighted by our product. Um, they have friends that recommended N26 to them. I think, too, um, we have much lower overhead costs. If you walk through the offices of N26, they look very much different compared to um, like the boardrooms of traditional banks. And three, we just have a much more modern in infrastructure. We don't invest into uh, bank branches, into branch network that a growing number of customers doesn't even need anymore. Um, and finally, I think it's one of the other like 26 reasons um, we wanted to provide a product that is as mobile as our customers. So let me finish by looking or like by telling you what's next. I talked about at the beginning, this company was built on the vision to build a pan-European bank because we realized that the financial needs of the customers are very much alike throughout the markets and that the product that's working in Germany is also going to work in France. We actually realized that the financial needs are similar in the entire Western world. And so our vision also become bigger. Today, we want to build the first global retail bank. We want to build a bank that's delighting um, 100 million of customers around the world. We have a team in uh, New York City that's working towards the launch in the first half of 2019. And the question has been asked, what is the next market N26 is going to? I'm very happy to announce today that we have already formed a team that's working on next market and on next continent, and that the next market N26 is going to will be Brazil. We will soon update the public on how are we going to launch there and what's the timeline for our launch in that market. And with that, I'm done with my slides, and I'm very much looking forward to take any questions you might have. Hello, Mark Bellain. Um, congratulations on your success. I have a question regarding um, the, um, the challenges you might face in terms of compliance and uh, regulations in all the markets that you enter, also in the US or in Brazil. Uh, how do you uh, ensure that um, uh, your platform is not used for financial crime? <clears throat> so the question was for compliance, which is obviously um, a very like important point. Like we um, we entered this highly uh, regulated environment, and if you ask me today, I think one of the big challenges we see is um, how can we actually maintain the agility of a startup in this highly um, regulated environment. Um, if you think about regu regulations. Um, I think it's also important to understand that there's very often a trade-off between compliance and security, and uh, uh, like, like user experience and speed and all, these, um, and, 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 and all these things on the other side. So I think it's, you always have to take like, a very smart approach. You obviously have to be 100% compliant, and it's clear for everyone at N26, as in any other bank, you know, if you lose money of the customers, or if you lose data of the customers, you can just go home and do something else. So I think it's also very important to 
stay compliant with regulations, to stay secure. On the other side, I think it is important not to be like, you know, 150% compliance. I think what we're seeing is that a lot of banks are ruled by compliance teams today, and they are like basically working to get compliance from 150% to 170%, and that very often goes to the disadvantage of the customers. And that's, I don't think, uh, the, way, the way to success. Thanks for the uh, presentation. This is going from the Oxford Universities. I would like to ask uh, questions. Uh, your card is mainly a um, debit card. Yeah. Have you ever think about a credit card as a stage up? This first question. And the second is, what kind of add-on service uh, as a banking, you can provide to your users, not only for transactions, but also the financial advice? Thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think um, the, 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 the question about the credit card. So we launched with a debit card because our launch market was uh, Germany and also in other areas of Europe. Um, a credit card is not so much of a requested feature. We're launching the US, that's obviously a very credit card heavy market. But what we uh, realized, you know, Two years ago, three years ago, N26 was a German company, and the majority of our customer base um, was in Germany. Today, we see that 80% of our growth is outside Germany. I think in two years from now, 80% of the growth of N26 will be outside Europe. And if you think about the features and the products we are launching, they should be products and features that make our value proposition better throughout the markets. So right now, launching a debit card is just the easier product to internationalize. If you think about the credit, you need a credit scoring. Having said that, we are launching in the US as the next market, and the launch product in the US will be substantially alike the launch product in UK, and um, the launch product uh, in the US will be also the same as the launch product in Brazil. I think in a version two, and also justified if you have like millions of customers, we will adapt the product to the local market. And if, the, if our US customers, if they request reimbursing checks, there will be check functionality. If they expect a credit card, there will be a credit card functionality. There was also a second question, sorry, could you? Yeah. I think financial advice is also something um, you could think about, like we try to be very close to our customers and we always prioritize the features and the products we're releasing according to our customer needs. So for me, the biggest question is, what's the customer problem? What's the most pressing customer problem I can solve? And until today, it was just other features our customers requested. For example, like a shared account functionality that we are working on. But I think providing some investment solutions as a starting point, providing some robot advisory around that, it's definitely something we're looking into from time to time, but so far it has just not been on the top of our wish list of our customers, also given that it's a very young customer de uh, demography. Hello, uh, Olivier Béraud from uh, National Bank of Canada. Uh, I'm wondering where you see N26 in four years from now, and uh, where do you expect in terms of uh, um, <clears throat> reaction from the traditional banking. Yeah, so where do we see N26 in four years from now? We have already been around since um, 2013. And I think in the nationalization, it's a very important topic for us. We have built this product with a lot of, of effort. Um, we put a lot of thought into the product, and for us to become more relevant, to become a relevant player in the financial service space, it is really about growth, and it's really about bringing N26 to like many more markets. Now in terms of building a global retail bank, the good news is you don't have to go to the 194 countries on this planet, but if you capture European Union, if you capture the US, and perhaps eight other markets, um, you can capture more than 80% of the total accessible market, you can capture more than 80% of the worldwide banking revenue. So I think um, in the next four markets, we sh in the next four years, we should have launched in many more markets. I think that's the one big topic. I think the other topic is we want to become the primary partner of our customers in financial matters throughout the markets. And I think so we should um, 
like deepen our product range, or we should expand our product range to really have for like more and more requests that our customers can have like the, a suitable product or solution. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the question was expect, uh, like reaction from other banks. We have seen very little activity from, from other banks. Obviously, I think at the beginning, no one knew N26. Then no one took N26 serious from the traditional banks. I think what we see today is probably N26 is known in any boardroom of any European uh, bank. And I think N26 is standing as the role model for um, providing the best Digital, digital user experience. So far, obviously, I think we see um, like banks also working on their digital offering, but for a couple of reasons, some of them are mentioned. I think banks, as other incumbent players in many other industries, have been very slow in responding to digital challenges. Hello, Dorota Zimnoch. Uh, congratulations, it's a great story, and you are in two of my home countries, Poland and UK, which is fantastic. Uh, you just mentioned about financial services and expansion. Um, I wonder if you also look at the other areas like insurance, and are you planning to go into platformification of, of products, or are you staying very focused on banking side? If you yeah, like. so the question was, um, for, for other financial verticals. Like I think our general rule at N26, we put the customer first and we think about like what does the customer request. And if I said like financial services, I said like banking is the area most ready for disruption. I think areas like insurance, they come quite close. So it was also the question whether we, uh, we're doing things through partnerships or whether we're doing things alone. Like if you would have asked me like three years ago, we were very much talking about our FinTech hub we are building. We were very much talking about integrating other financial services companies. But we are, and it's a little bit coming back to the discussion we had before, we are lacking of partners that share our global ambition. So it's very few banks. So there's no bank actually that has a global ambition. There's no FinTech startup that has a global ambition. And today, you can integrate with an insurance partner that works in Germany, and then perhaps they go to a second market. We are in 24 markets today. We're soon going to be in 30 and more markets. And uh, if, we do a part, if we do something like insurance, it should be a solution that should make our value proposition stronger throughout the markets. But I wouldn't know which insurance solution I could integrate, which partner, broker, insurance company I could go with that would actually allow me to offer products throughout my markets. Thank you. Hi, it was a very great presentation for you. And we, I have two questions. The first thing is um, the such new services like voice sending and kind of Twitter in German supermarket kind of thing services was helpful to growing customer number. And the second thing I've just watched the news about N26 that you have planned to go to Asian market. So is there any, any plan to go to Asian market like Korea or China or Japan? Yeah. I think first of all, like <clears throat> I, un I take the second question first. So is there any plans to go to Asian markets? I said we want to build a global retail bank. I also said if you go like to 10 markets outside of Europe, you capture more than 80% of the worldwide banking re revenue. Um, some of these 10 markets happen to be in Asia. So obviously, if you look at the worldwide banking revenues and you rank them according to size, the markets, obviously the first one is the US. <clears throat> the second one would be China, for example. Like I could talk very long time about China. We have two leading investors in N26, like Tencent, Horizon Ventures, that are actually based in China. Like I, also from the experience, I think other companies made by expanding to China, um, <clears throat> are a little bit reluctant to actually plan for a launch in China, but there's definitely some other markets like Japan or Korea where N26 could uh, be an interesting value proposition because you have the same situations throughout the world. The financial needs of the customers are very much alike. It's the same in Asia and South America. Um, you know, people, they want to have a place to store value. It's, it's an account. They want to have a card to pay. They want to save. They want to invest. They might need a credit, like short-term, long-term, secured, unsecured. But this is basically it. Then you could think about topics um, like insurance. Financial needs very much alike. And at the same time, I think the user experience 
the products traditional banks are providing in all these markets have been disappointing customers for many years. So I think we will go to Asian markets. I think N26 will be able to offer a very competitive product, a very good use experience compared to the rest of the market. <clears throat> I think the other question you asked, like for the features we are offering, what we are seeing is that growth and thereby like the um, like, uh, like the growth is very much uh, correlated with the completeness of the product. So the more features we are launching, the more products we are offering in any market, the stronger is our growth. And so like we drawing cash as we have it like in Germany and Austria at the supermarket is something that our uh, customers like and it's also something that's driving growth. Hello Maximilian, um, Felix from Austria actually. Um, I was wondering, as you're talking all the time about the expansion plans, are there any plans already on the table to go into public or like a public <coughs> company? And my second question is if you are also planning into going into cryptocurrency, yeah. or you want to say <coughs> like a classic bank? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the question was um, about going. Uh, um, what's it about going public? Um, to answer that a little bit broader, like um, you can build a startup one or the other way. My co-founder and myself, we decided very early in the days, we don't want to see N26 being sold to a traditional bank like for a couple of million euros. Like my vision is and what keeps me like up basically every second night is I want to build a company that other banks are afraid of. Like our vision is really big. We want to build the global retail bank. And if you have a vision like this, you just need a lot of funds. N26 hasn't entered the business to distribute dividends to our investors. So what we are doing is every money, every cash flow we are generating, we're investing in the growth. We're investing it in the growth of our team and we're investing it in the growth of our customer base. Obviously then at one point in time you need to think about do you want to stay private or do you want to go public as the better like source for funding. What we have seen also like um, also just in the last funding round but also like by companies that are much further down the road like Uber you can actually stay private for a very long time and can still like raise significant amounts of capital. Like uh, right now and for the next two years um, I like doing an IPO is definitely not the topic, but it's always the story, the long-term vision we tell like to our, to our team and we're also telling to our investors. So it's definitely something in 2021, 2022 or afterwards we are going to um, analyze um, like whether it, this is something that makes sense for us. The other topic was about like cryptocurrency. We didn't do anything in this area yet because Again, we're always asking ourselves the question, like what is really the customer problem I want to solve? And if you think about the currency, like what's the purpose of, of the currency? One, it is an accounting unit for like a couple of reasons, high volatility, um, like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are not working as an uh, accounting unit. Two, it's, it's a value for purchase. It's a currency. Um, like this is not working due to acceptance reasons. So for us it was the question, like, What's really the problem we want to solve? Like for me, it's an, it's, it's an asset category. It's like gold or other assets. And <clears throat> I think it's an interesting case at one point in time to give customers the opportunity to buy like any kind of asset categories, but it's definitely um, not in the top of our priority list. Mm -hmm. Hello, Araminta. I am from the UK, living here in Spain. And I'm a user of N26, Revolut, all the others, so I get to compare a few of them and they're, they're pretty cool. But obviously, from the younger generation, I'm very open to doing this, but I'm curious, what are you doing to capture older generations who might not be so open to opening an N26 or, I mean, Revolut have the same problem. Um, well, what are you doing to try and get those older generations to yeah. open an N26 bank account? Thank you. Yeah, so the question was, I was actually just being told that this needs to be the last question because apparently other people want to speak as well. Um, 
<coughs> question was, what do we do like, for, for an older audience? Basically, N26 is not only a product for millennials. What we actually realized is that someone who has a digital mindset, someone who likes a digital product, has actually the same needs, regardless of whether this person is like 20 or whether this person is 50. Also, if you think about, like, think about the iPhone, think about other smartphones, they have actually sta set a global standard for user experience, and great user experience is like looks the same for someone who is like 20 or someone who is like who is 50. Also, if you look at our audience, we were actually surprised that about like 30 to 40 percent of our customers are 35 years or older. So N26 is actually a product that's also suited <coughs> for a little bit older people. Obviously, in terms of prioritizing the features, <coughs> if you want to do like a shared account for young for a rather younger audience, or if you want to do like an investment product for high net worth individuals that usually like you know are in the 50s and 60s, obviously we would always go for the products that more of our um, customers can use. And then perhaps to, to end with, um, I think when we launched in 26, like um, we didn't do any paid marketing. I remember that, uh, but we still had a waiting list with 50,000 um, customers. We just did a little bit of PR, and there was two kind of media was covering N26. One was the startup media, the other one was the tech media for the super early adopters. And then uh, after six months, sorry, six weeks after launch, I was looking into the demographics of our users, and I was realizing what these two groups have in common. It's the sex. They were all male. Like when N26 launched, 96% of our customers were male. But I think it's very much the same if you look at other products. If you look at WhatsApp, you know, 10 years ago, like people like us might have been using WhatsApp. Today, my mother, who is like 75 years old, is sending me WhatsApp messages. So we also see with N26, our audience, it's still like the digital natives, but I think what's a good development, our audience is getting a little bit more female every month, and it's, it's much more female than it was like a couple of years ago. It's getting more female every month, and it's also getting a little bit older, a little bit more mainstream, so to see, a little bit more um, similar to the average of the population. Great. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak here, to the people organizing that, and thanks a lot for the questions. Thank you, Maximilian.